September, 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 September. The fourth of four blood moons in September, which will be a super moon. The end of the Shemitah. Rolling it over into a jubilee year. And supposedly the end of the Jade Helm operation. And the Pope comes to America. By now you should have heard the news. You should have got the gist of mainly one of the main reasons he's going to come to America is because he's going to be pushing climate change, apparently. It says right here, this paragraph, he is going to deliver what is likely a highly influential encyclical this summer on environmental degradation and the effects of human-caused climate change on the poor. So remember that now. Just remember that little piece right there. He is going to have in his encyclical, which is going to be very influential <clears throat> worldwide on the people. Some won't even be Catholics. Probably a good percentage of Catholic faithful worldwide, it will influence them in their thinking and, and they will we will seek their obedience and agreement on it. He is apparently going to say humans caused climate change. What we do, our breathing and exhaling, our driving, our, our industries, all these things he's going to put his two cents in to try and be a driver for changing things in this this idea that's been fantasized out to us. Don't you remember all the climate change numbers have been doctored? And there was big skidoo about it not too awful long ago about how they did not include the cooling years. The scientists that put all this data together and pumped it out to the world and began to make the argument for what was then called global warming before it was exposed that they tinkered with the numbers to come up with the numbers that they did. Then they repackaged it, sold it back to the public, and called it climate change. Well, don't you remember that? Men of evil, who are puppets that run the world at the behest of their satanic god whom they worship, they play a major driver, if not the only driver. But I believe there's a little more to it than just them. So we'll say they're major drivers and not the only drivers, okay? By doing these things, because our, our ulterior motive to why they do what they do, there is a further goal within this agenda. God doesn't always have to bring about floods or earthquakes or famines. I'm not saying that he never does, because when there has to be an awakening, awakening of the people, a shake-up to get their attention, or a punishment, then he, he surely does. But at the same time, he doesn't actually have to do it all the time if he doesn't want to. He can let the evil do it 
if they're already trying to do things like that. He can he holds them back from doing everything they want to do, or if things would be way farther down the line, progressed more speedily. So he can just take a little protection off and let them do a little more of what they wanted to do in the first place, and the end still comes out the same almost. But you have another man who says he's being misled by experts at the UN. But he thinks his heart is in the right place. But he would do the flock and the world a disservice by putting his moral authority behind the UN's unscientific agenda on the climate. And that's the thing. The Pope is recognized worldwide, whether you're a Catholic or not. And he's got a lot of clout. Uh, people usually at least read or hear something that he's said. And um, a lot of them take it to heart. Either agree or disagree, but you can have a lot of them just because it's they are Catholic that, that you know might agree. And then there's people that believe in this global warming, climate change, and there's no religion or what have you. Just have no beliefs, maybe, or some different religion. So you just be another big guy up there. And they'll be shaking their heads and agreeing. All the ones that bought the lie. It's kind of a lengthy article here, but he's not the first one to push an environmental message. Benedict had also been called um, the Green Pope by some people, and he wrote about the same thing. So he actually um, got the ball rolling, and, you know, passed it off. Kind of like Daddy Bush whenever he put the framework together for uh, NAFTA. Left it on the old desk and then Slick Willie Clinton comes in and signs his name on it. And old Ross Perot was right. And then he saw that sucking sound. All them jobs got sucked down the drain and out of our country. Francis chose his name from Francis of Assisi, of course, you know by now. And he was the patron saint of animals and the environment. So this is an older article that maybe you've read before. But if you have bought the lie of climate change, you must snap out of it. You must wake up. You must figure things out. Winter, spring, summer, fall. Do you have the same temperature all year round? No. Why not? Because it changes year round, doesn't it? The climate changes year round. Uh, somebody's going to argue with me out there and say, yeah, but this is a lot more drastic. Well, then do a little bit of work and learn yourself and educate yourself on things. Just, you know, don't make somebody always have to do the work for you. I mean, we'll do as much as we can to help you out, but you got to do some stuff on your own. The sun has cycles, doesn't it? Some cycles, the sun is more active. And it's putting out more, you know, hotter, active, flares. Get it? Sometimes it's in a um, less active cycle, less output, less flares. Got it? The Earth doesn't go a perfect circle around the sun. Sorry to bust your bubble if you thought that. So some point in time, we're a little farther away from the sun than if we were rolling around in a perfect circle. And sometime, we're a little closer than if we went in a perfect circle. 
And depending on where we're at at that point in time and what cycle the sun's in and what its activity is doing causes some changes here on the ground on Earth. I mean, don't you know about uh, the last time that something was kind of snappy around here? The little ice age? Yeah, things cooled off quite a bit then. Yeah, they didn't have cars and stuff then either, did they? But something changed for quite a period of time. And then what happened? And then it gradually warmed up and came out of it. So back to the climate. The common enemy of humanity is man. In searching for a new enemy to unite us, we came up with the idea that pollution, the threat of global warming, water shortages, famine, and the like would fit the bill. All these dangers are caused by human intervention. It's only through changed attitudes and behavior that they can be overcome. The real enemy, then, is humanity itself. From the Club of Rome, which is a think tank, environmental think tank, premier environmental think tank, consulting to the United Nations. You get it? You see it? It's in ink right in front of you. Their words, not mine. Nobody made it up. This is their words. They came up with the threat. They made it up. It wasn't a threat. They made it up. They got all these guys together and said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to say this is this, and we're going to get people to believe this is this. And by doing that, we're going to be able to change attitudes, which is a form of the way you think, carry out, carry about, and behavior. Okay, well, that is an ultimate goal at the inception of this whole thing. Agenda 21, on the exec execution of it, it's going to require a profound reorientation of all, I don't say part of it, I don't say you can be left out, all human society, everybody on the planet. Unlike anything the world has ever experienced, a major shift in the priorities of both the governments of the world and individuals and an unprecedented redeployment of human and financial resources. This shift is going to demand that a concern for the environmental consequences of every human action, every human action, let that burn into your mind, be integrated into individual and collective decision making at every level, every level, individual and collective decision making. environmental consequences global warming human intervention changing attitudes and behavior redeployment of human and financial resources a shift in priorities every human action individual and collective at every level. You in Agenda 21. <clears throat> so following other statements that they have made is, here's a good one. The earth has cancer and the cancer is man. The Club of Rome, premier environmental think tank, consultant to the United Nations. Here's Maurice Strong, founder of the UN Environment Program. He's a scumbag just like George Soros. Maybe they were 
you know, twins joined at the hip at birth and got separated. Isn't the only hope for the planet that the industrialized civilizations collapse? Isn't it our responsibility to bring that about? He said it. He also said, current lifestyles and consumption patterns of the affluent middle class involving high meat intake, use of fossil fuels, appliances, air conditioning, and suburban, suburban housing are not sustainable. Well, guess what? I bet he eats meat and he flies around in an airplane and has chauffeur li driven limousines and has a home a mansion or something, a compound it has all the best appliances and the best air conditioning but it's only sustainable for his kind not ours So you see these people make up these lies because they have an agenda. <clears throat> They're not just a bunch of guys that get together and decide how to destroy the world on their own and then rebuild it out of the ashes, order out of chaos. They play for the other team. They worship the other side. They answer to Satan, the devil. That's where they take their cue from. They're acting on orders. You can make a book on that. You can see he will also go and visit the Pharaoh in chief. On September 23rd, he will be the third time a pontiff visited the White House, John Paul and Pope Benedict both have done it before him. And they will discuss poor poverty, religious freedom and immigration, and the environment. And he will speak to the United Nations. Ban Ki moon made it official with the statement. Of course, he's saying it's the fourth pope in the 70 year history of the UN. He will be meeting there. Supposedly on the 25th. Governments are expected to adopt binding agreements. A binding agreement. So when you think about a binding agreement, I'm not saying that it is, I'm just throwing the idea out there to get, to get your thoughts on it, but it does make one wonder. Could, a, could the word usage of a binding agreement be considered a covenant with many? Just some food for thought there. The Vatican is influential at the United Nations. 
he, Pope Francis, is going to push for international commitments this year to curb greenhouse gases. Now, he's going he's gonna to say it's going to be helping the poor protect themselves against climate-related hazards, which are supposedly a direct result from humans. Remember what, what I just showed you just prior to this. And he's speaking to Congress, too. Mm hmm Yes, he is. Uh-oh. I don't know what happened there. Yeah, maybe they cut that page off. It's not refreshing. Maybe it is that one. Hmm. There we go. But he is going to speak there, supposedly, on September 24th. So that's just another verification I'm showing to you. That on September 24th, he is supposed to be speaking to the Congress. I don't know why this one is. Hmm. I don't know why that one done that to me? Huh. Oh well, I think I've covered a majority of everything <clears throat> that I need to speak on on the Pope. I think that um Oh yes, that's what that page was that went ahead and whited itself out. It was about how he was also going to go to Philadelphia. And uh, he was going to be having a, I think it's called a Families Day event. So you have the Families Day event. You have the White House with the Pharaoh in chief. You have the Congress. And you have the United Nations. He's going to cover a lot of ground. We've already seen that a lot of it is going, a lot of it, not all of it. is going to speak about climate change. Keep pumping this idea out, pumping it out, pumping it out, pumping it out. Urging the leaders to enact a sweeping United Nations Climate Change Accord. First time commit every nation to enact tough new laws to cut the emissions cause global warming. This idea of human caused change. We've already seen the Club of Rome has already said the common enemy of humanity is man and it's searching for a new enemy to unite us. They were looking around for, for something to pump out to the people. Something to lie to them about to help further their agenda. And they came up with the idea that pollution, the threat of global warming, would fit that bill. Because we can say all these things are caused by humans. And then we'd say we have to change these attitudes and behavior so that we can save everything from a catastrophic outcome. Real enemy then is humanity itself. So they came up with this already. But you have this Pope 
going in on it with them, going all in on it with them. He is not going to be, if he, he is not a stupid guy. I'm telling you what. He's got a pretty good IQ between them ears. And he knows, I'm sitting here and I'm telling you flat out, he knows that pushing this idea, he's not telling the truth. I'm sorry if that ruffles your feathers, all you people out there that like him. And Catholics, you know, can't do nothing about it. i got to play straight with you and tell you the truth. Because he certainly is not going to be telling the truth whenever he pushes this lie. It's to further... An agenda. And the agenda is the new world order. To set up the new world order kingdom. For you know who. That's right. Mr. Antichrist. Who, at some point, probably not too long from now, <coughs> excuse me, will reveal himself somehow, make his presence known, whether the abomination of desolation is coming sooner than we'd hoped for or not, that remains to be seen. But I, I believe that whoever it is will, is already here and is already known. I mean, the Antichrist, he can't be a nobody that anybody's never heard of. I mean, it, it just wouldn't make sense that uh, Johnny the stock boy at the local market ends up becoming the Antichrist. That don't play. Because nobody knows who Johnny the stock boy is. He started doing some miracles and stuff. You know, it would take a little while for it to get all the way around the world for everybody to, to know who he is. So It's already somebody well-known in a high-up position. Who mostly has a favorable opinion of a high percentage of the people. Whether this person or not knows that they are, my personal opinion is they don't. My personal opinion is that you've got a handful of them, maybe two handfuls of them, that would be willing to be that person. And that, that's a mind blower in and of itself. That somebody would actually be willing to allow themselves to be, to be the Antichrist. But I bet you we've got a couple handfuls of them as potential, um, potential candidates. And they would give themselves over and allow him to possess them, Satan to come possess them. So it'll look like them, smell like them, act like them, talk like them, walk like them. But the inside, who is the person on the inside? won't be them. You get me? I don't think we're real long far off from from that person starting to make their presence known. 
And I mean known in a way that is underlined known. All these changes and plans, they want this, this binding agreement, which think about whether that could be considered maybe a covenant with many, to be done by the end of the year. which will lead you right into 2016. And then we get into some stranger stuff. You know, I like I like Gil Broussard. I think he does a lot of good research. He is thinking that we will be seeing something possibly in the sky new right about March 2016. You can put whatever name on it you'd like to, because there are several names that could be put on it that are commonly used. You know, Procolibus, Gabriel's Fist, Nibiru, Planet X, the Tenth Planet, what have you. <clears throat> of course, there's different theories out there all over the place. But I do believe there is an object. And I do believe we'll see something. I don't know if it'll be in March. But the good Lord's sending them blood moons for some reason. And I still say they're, they're some type of signals. And I, I got the feeling they're warnings. Forewarned. Four moons. Or warned of things that are going to come. Or warned to get your house straightened up. Fortify your spirituality and your belief in Jesus. Because when the so called alien contact actually comes down to the ground here on earth I'm sorry to tell you but your only real weapon the only real weapon that will work that's going to save you save me is Jesus and the power and authority of his shed blood and his promises to us. You have to believe that. Because no amount of ammunition you got is going to do you any good. Because you're dealing with something supernatural. And they'll probably eat them bullets like candy. So if you think you'll just blow them away, better think again. These are real, real old entities with abilities and high intellect. And, and you're just going to have to have the power of Christ. You're going to have to ask him for it and get it, use it. Remember, he gave us the power to heal sick and cure disease, to tread on serpents, uh, serpents and scorpions, evil spirits, cast out demons. He didn't leave us alone. He left us with the Holy Spirit. We call upon his name and believe upon him. We can do these things. The people has forgotten. Or maybe their faith isn't strong enough and they don't believe enough that they can do these things. But you can. He wants to help us do those things. We're not defenseless. He's always there for us. He will be there for us in any of our times of needs. 
He wants to answer all our prayer, prayers and give us things that we pray for. Of course, he's not going to give you a $10 million lottery win, so, you know, get real on that. Things that matter. So in the times that are to come, you should be readying yourself and your families and your friends. Because it's going to be a bumpy ride the farther we go. And then it's going to go from bumpy to really, really rough. It's not just going to be here in the Americas. It's, it's, it's going to be rough here in the Americas, but it's going to be a worldwide thing. But just remember, September is key. You got from now till September. You can be getting closer to the Lord. You can use your time wisely. You know, just because you have to work, cook, clean, pay bills, raise kids, sleep. Well, He's more important than all of the above. Because none of us would have any of what I just mentioned if it weren't for Him. So make time for Him. He loves you and He makes time for you anytime you want it. He'll have a conversation with you anytime you want to talk to Him. So you all be safe. Stay alert. Pay attention. And do like he said. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid you're going to be ridiculed. People are going to laugh at you, point a finger, smart off, what have you. What, what is a couple of important things before I close this out that he said? Preach the gospel to all the world. Share it. So share the gospel with people. Explain to the best of your ability things about it to them. If things that you don't know, then ask somebody else that does know where you can explain it better. And as hard as it would seem to be, love your brother and your sister. Spread the gospel and love your brother and your neighbor, everybody. You have to. That's what he said to do. Even the people that kill people, even the ISIS, even enemies, you have to pray for them and you have to love them. I, mean, I, I don't know how to get that across, maybe it's not being explained by me right, but we shouldn't hate them for what they're doing. We should pray for them. So those are two high points that always come to my mind that I think are very important that people forget about doing because they rely on pastors to do it for them. But everybody should do it. Everybody should share the gospel and talk about it to others. And everybody should love each other. So be safe on Memorial Day wherever you're at. And I'll talk to you soon.